Greetings, Nick Pocket with Sweetwater. I'm backstage with the one, the only Dave Amato of Oreo Speedwagon. I first met Dave in 1985 backstage at the Texas Jam. My band, Grim Reaper, was very low on the bill. This man was wow. singing and playing guitar with Ted Nugent. He was a lot higher on the bill. <laughs> what I didn't know until today, though, is I actually heard him in 1984 on the Terminator movie soundtrack. You know that great uh. scene where Arnold's looking for Sarah Connor in that club, Tech Noir? That cool music with a great solo in the background is the band called The Triangles. Right. Dun, dun, da. This guy is responsible for writing and also playing that guitar solo. I forgot about that. That's a long time ago. It's wow. a good song, man. Yeah, this is it's a good a song. Really that, good that, song. Was fun, that was a great movie. It was, yeah, yeah was one of the classics. Amazing movie. Takes you back in time to 1984. Yeah. Literally yeah. does. Wow. The hair, everything. And us in 85. I know. Wow, I forgot about that years. one too. 33 well, years. 33 years. You're taking me back, man. This is good. So we're both only 28 now, so yeah. how is that possible? Well, I know. We, we, we still look young. Yeah. We're very young. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Dave's tech, his name is T Bird or Tony. He calls this, and you'll see why in a minute, he calls this the rig amortis, the amortis. rig of death. And there's a reason for that. <laughs> Ignoring all these racks, which are quite amazingly cleverly set up, which we'll talk about in a minute, Dave has two racks of guitars. He plays 14 songs tonight, so he will only change guitars 11 times. That's all. So that's it. It no. should be 14 guitars for 14 this, songs. That's so. true. But he starts off with his signature Gibson. So that's, why don't we talk about that okay. one first? Should I so, grab this one? Please. First, yeah. This is uh, from the Gibson Custom Shop. Uh, it's my model. It's a HD TV yellow. Um, Looks cool. With man. yeah, thank you. It, and I kind of, kind of mocked it like old school Gibson guitars, like um, for a junior. Junior is usually you know one pickup right. and just volume and tone. And I thought that was cool. And I've got a couple of old fifty. Um, 50 juniors that okay. I just love the TV finish, but this is a little more, you know, grainy in there. So they called it HD high definition TV yellow. And um, my buddy at the custom shop, Phil Wharton, um, we were going to put a rosewood neck on it. And he, he found some, and I love ebony necks, which is on Gibson Customs. Right. And he found a whole batch of white ebony, which is really kind of crazy. With have never been crazy. on a Gibson... Gibson guitar before. Albino? Is that what yeah, they call it? I, no, it's just white ebony, he wow. said. So I, I said, well, I don't know, you know, if that's going to work. So he said, well, look, I'll try it. And if you don't like it, I'll strip it off, you know. So when he first put it on, it was, it was pretty, pretty white. So it looked like a, a strat with a maple neck or something like that. Like, I can't use that, you know. Right. But he said, no, no, I'm going to, I'm going to dye it down and, and, and it'll look, it'll look really cool. And, and he did it, man. And I just love it. And it's a fast and it's a real ebony neck. And uh, with a Floyd Rose tremolo, which you can kind of have fun on a Les Paul. Oh, yeah. With a, you know, so. Now, and, uh, have you got the Floyd set so you can pull it up as well as push yes, it down? Yes, you can pull it. So yeah, you've got the yeah, recess way, in it? Yeah, way, uh, way down or way up, too. Yeah, I, I like it swaying. Gotcha. You know, swaying back and forth, a little bit of both. Um, and the pickup is? Uh, 57 Classic Plus. Plus. Yeah, it's, so it's really good. It's, it's, it sounds great. And it also, yeah, yeah, a little bit more juice, yeah. And it's got a push pull, because of course there's nothing, there's no, there's no other pickup, and you know the switch. So, so it, it cuts the pickup like a like a P90. Oh like really? Is, yeah, so it sounds like a P90. Cool. So it, it acts like a junior if you pull the thing up, I think. So. Or um, close enough for rock and roll. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's it's good. So, here it is, my signature model. You also have a white one that looks amazing. Yeah, yeah. We, I had a couple. Just you know, trying some colors for me. That's that one you can get um, right now. That TV yellow model is is available right now. But I just had some uh, some kind of painted for me just to see a different you know different color. And this is just a a stock uh, white one. And uh, same same thing, um, same appointments as that one. Gotcha. And it's um, the binding's uh, cool with that. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of aged. Yeah. Age ones on, on a white one, I, and it's the same same binding. It's just on, on the white one, it kind of looks a little different. Yeah, it does. But um, I start the show with this one because Kevin likes it. He loves it. I can play the white one, start the show with the white one. I'm like, okay, got to do what the lead singer asks. Always. Always. Remember, kids, it's all about the lead singer. <laughs> the kids, that's right. <laughs> lead singer. So you got to make them happy. And then your next guitar is Black Bigsby. Um, yeah, yeah. This is, um, this is a, a 57. Gibson Custom, oh, it's way heavier than mine. <laughs> um, 
this is a black custom. I lo I I love loading up triple pickups, you know, on the regular standard uh, customs, and I've I've always used triple pickups in the past. I've had them in the 70s and 80s, and and uh, I I think they're they're great uh, triple pickups. And I said load it up, you know, put a Bigsby on it, just just load as much stuff on it as you can uh, you can get. Now let me ask you this about the triple pickup. Apart from being not to quote Nigel Tufnell, one more. <laughs> um, what does that do for you, would you say, as opposed to just having the regular two pickups with that in the middle? It, obviously, that's just that pickup. What does that give you tonally? Well, I, I kind of use it just to, um, to, to see, but I can't fight this feeling. I do a, like a little, um, just these little notes that come in and around. And, and with that, it's kind of, that's that pickup when you push that up. And down is that pickup. And in the middle, this is a stock wiring for Gibson, even in right. the 50s. And it puts those like right in the middle of those two pickups. Oh, I see. So, so it's it not just, just gotcha. It's kind of mellower, but right. you still got the, the trouble. The so it's just, you know, in, like seep it in there. Gotcha. I, I don't use that, you know, for, for solos or anything like that. Mostly my solos are that one, like the single pickup. But I put it in there just, just to kind of seep it in, and it works for that song for me. So I, I just really like the look of the triple pickups, gotcha. most of all, for, for me, you know. So I didn't know that on the triple, so the middle is just just between those two? Yes, that's a stock wiring of a of a, a custom, like from the from day one from the fifties. Cool. So that up is that one, down is that one, that is those two, cool. that one's off. So just right in the middle. So it kind of has an in between, right. little kind of nasally sound. Gotcha. It's cool. it's it's, it's kind of cool. So we've looked at a couple of Les Pauls, including this man's signature. Let's take a look at some other flavors in your fine rack of axes. I'll tell you what, this is a fifty nine. I got from the custom shop and they tell me it's the best flamed 59 they've ever seen and I've never seen a better one come out of the custom shop right now but look at the flame Good if, grief. on that one. It's like an endangered species. Oh yeah I know it's 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 crazy crazy flame and it sounds amazing you know a after my signature models this is my go-to one sure. it just has an amazing it's amazing color and amazing sound it just is a, is a great match, guitar the match is nice too yeah yeah it's 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 beautiful i've had it in some ads and, and guys have called me and said oh my god where, where can i get one yeah, how much one of those? Yeah. yeah how much exactly <laughs> so the, that flame on that is is pretty pretty special i love yeah. this beat up strat you've got back here too oh yeah um let's go back there which one? That one? This oh yeah, this beast here. That What's was a, um, it's a custom shop, custom shop Fender. I just found it at um, at Norm's Rare Guitars in L.A. I just loved it because it was so beat up. But and this is relic. It's not. Yeah, no, it's a, just a custom shop relic. Could, who yeah. did this? Mr. Cruz or someone? Uh, probably John. I don't know exactly, but probably John Cruz. He loves to do. He loves to beat him up. This <laughs> looks authentically old. And I tell you, it just, I didn't change the pickups. It came stock, it's the stock pickups. I think either it's a 55 or a 56. I can't remember what year they mocked it after. So, and there's a good story here. I got this one used at Norm's and then it sounded so good. And I, I found out, I think it's a 56. So I went to Sweetwater, your place and, and uh, I found a black one to match it, and, uh, and it, it sounded exactly like it. So they mocked like a 50, it's either 55 or 56. Right. So I got a spare to this one because I loved it so much. And the pickups, um, w the sound of them were identical. And I picked up a couple of which was a 57, or they have a couple of reissues at a 54, and it just didn't, didn't sound the same. Right. But for some reason, you know, when they, they mocked it for a 55 or 56, they, they got the pick of the windings or something, I don't know. But anyway, I got a spear of this from Sweetwater, a black one with a maple neck, and it was beat up like this too. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was great. Nice. So yeah, I came to you guys for, to uh, match it. it Good. Was, it was awesome. You guys helped me find the, find the mate to this one. Cool. Yeah. What else can we look so, at here, do you think? Um, oh, there's some uh, okay, so it's custom the shop. What have got the SG? And here we have a custom yeah. shop SG, right? There, there you go with the, yes. Yes, I go with my triple pickup again. <laughs> again, because yeah. I love the pickup and I load it up, you know, with the, yeah. the Vibrola. 
And uh, I love triple pickup guitars. It's so funny because my signature model is just one pickup. But I do, I just, <laughs> I just love, and the same, same thing. Like right. Up is that one, down is that one, and in the middle is those two. Gotcha. Yeah, same wiring, Gibson always made. And uh, this guitar really screams. I use it on uh, Tough Guys with Ario. And it is, it is still, a, it's a SG Les Paul custom. From right from the custom shop, I had them make it for me. Great. So and look, it's beauty. turning brown. Yeah, it's and cool. And it's red, but it's turning, it, they always turn brown. I don't know why they do that. It's crazy. It's, looks great though. And yeah, they, I know. They did in the old days too. They all turn brown. Um, uh, oh, uh, is Mem from Memphis, a uh, Gibson, the custom shop in Memphis. Um, they made me, I have a red one, but this, this is a pretty rare the Pelham Blue. Good grief, I've uh, never seen three, one. 335, it's got the custom made sticker on it, just like the, um, the 50s. Right. And I just love this color. I picked it out for the, for the color, just, just kill me. And I don't see many Pelham Blue 335s. No. There's room for another pickup. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think I have an, I think I have enough. So yeah. I loaded because I, lo I got the big screen. I loaded it up there right, anyway. Right, right. So, yeah, that's that's a fun one too. Um, oh, this there's, there's a, a custom shop. Oh, here you ooh. go. There's a custom shop double neck that I saw. Um, Richie Sambora, Bon Jovi, of course, had the first one. My uh, buddy at the custom shop, Ronnie Payne, I don't think he's there anymore, but, but he was making us a couple of guitars here and there. And uh, so Richie had this, and it's Esquire on the bottom. Right. And then a telly on, on top. So, I don't know, it just looks so cool. I saw Richie's, uh, I think he plays it in one of his Bon Jovi videos. And yeah, I, think I, had, right. to, I yeah. had to have one. I had to have it. So he's got number one, and this is number two. His has a... A piezo pickup in here too, because he wants to go in acoustic. Right. But um, I didn't want that. I just, I just said, you know, make it really easy. Um, just the, you know, for the necks, and really doesn't work on the Esquire. Mm. It just works on that pickup right there. If gotcha. I want, I, I do a solo on "Time for Me to Fly" on that pickup, so I need that, that control over there. Other than that, it just, this is just straight, you know, no. straight out. Is there a number three, or is it just one and two? Well, just it. one and two. That's just it. Just one and two. Yeah, that's it. And it's it's relic too. They relic it for me. Custom shop. Cool. Now is Richie's Asian. relic or no? Oh yeah. yeah. Same. It's the same. He's just got a couple more things on his than than mine. I, I didn't want all that stuff. Right. So it's just plain. But that's this sounds beauty. amazing too because it's it's pretty pretty hefty and through the marshals it's 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 incredible. That's a great sound. So I I just I played in one song. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it's probably too heavy for two songs, right? <laughs> yeah, right. That's it. Forget it. And before we leave Guitarland, we have to talk about this because in amongst these fine electrics, there is a soul acoustic. Well, so talk about yeah, it. Yeah, I, I mean, Ooh, I, another double neck. Yeah, I have a Gibson uh, electric endorsement, but uh, Ovation approached approached me for uh, for doing a uh, an, an acoustic, and I was a little skeptical at first, but um, the custom shop opened again in Connecticut, and they made me uh, a first a six, a six string that was really well done. And then I said, um, I said, well, I'm on board with this. Let, let me, let's try, can I try a double neck? So they, they made this, this one for me, and, and you can get them too, and it's a, a Dave Amato um, double neck. It doesn't have any eplets like the old Ovation. I wanted right. to make it like, um, and we know this from Gibson, a Chet Atkins. Right. That does, you know, they're just a kind of a just a solid black one, and they put my name up here, and uh, it's a pretty cool sounding guitar. It's, it's really really lightweight and and very well very well done. Great tuners, and it's really fun, really fun to play. So double neck acoustic, twelve on top, six in the bottom, and uh, it sounds great. And for feedback, it doesn't have the eplets, so it stay, it right. doesn't feed back. So it's kind of a fun piece. Cool, axe talk over, let's get onto amps, shall we? All right. Okay, so we flip sides, now we're on the amp side after doing the axes. Quite an impressive pile of marshals there. All the same, <laughs> all the same model, isn't it? I, I, I love this model and, well, you, you and I, I mean, I, I've known you from Marshall for years and you know I'm a big Marshall fan 
But this in particular is your sound, isn't it? Yes, it's a 2210 from mid 80s, yeah. I, I would say. Yeah, it's the two channel 800, and it's, so it has a, no, a quote unquote normal channel and a boost channel. Right. And it's a monster. It, it, uh, it's my favorite Marshall ever. I, I mean, I love the Plexis, I respect them all, but, but this is my, my go to amp. I just and what makes it stand out for you tonally? I, I just think it's. Um, they, they, Marshall kind of modded. The 800, to me... It's got more this, meat, hasn't it? Yeah, this channel right here has more guts. I don't use any uh, distortions or no you know, overdrives. overdrives or anything like that. That's, Surely this. That's it right there. And it gives me... I mean, I'm not even even there yet. No, I you're not. Go, I no. can go... I know it's on... The, the distortion part of it's on like 9 and 9, but I still got a little bit more got to go. one more. <laughs> one more. It should, it should be 11. It should be one, yeah. one more. And but, you've also, and the clean channel has bass and treble, so you've got a separate tone control for that as well. And that's, you obviously use that for your cleans as well, correct? Yeah, I use it, yeah. It's supposed to be, it was, I think, made for rhythm, you know, rhythm, and then you go to a lead. It's, it wasn't for good. But I set it as good as I can for, for clean. Right. And it, and it works. It's like a, if I say this right, it's like a dirty Fender Bassman sound. Yeah, so it's uh, got know? a bit of a snarl, a bit yeah, of an edge. Yeah, cool. and, and I love that about it. So I kind of use that for the clean, clean side. And this side, basically, I just, like, I use like an Eddie Van Halen, like back it down, it gets cleaner. Right. And this amp, clean, when you back it down, it gets right. really cleaned up. It just, it works all the way around. So I just use my volume control, back it down for, you know, and then even you can almost get it clean when you back it way, way down, but then you switch on that side and then it really gets cleaned gotcha. up. And, and just for the amp fans out there, this is the 100 watt model of the 2205, which is a 50 watt head that Tom Morello is famed for using. So he's another guy with great tone, probably for the same reasons. I've oh. never discussed it with him, but he's never changed that amp. I so. love these 800s. I just can't, I just can't get away from my, when collecting, I've got what, 17 or 18 of them. That's now. what I've heard. But, <laughs> so you can't buy them because Dave has them all, basically. <laughs> exactly. Well, the guys call me, they say, I got another 2210. I'm like, I have enough. And then they go, no, no, you need one more. <laughs> all right, come on. One, one more again. One more, exactly. Yeah. So you've got four in total. Now you're running them in pairs, right? This is A rig and B rig. Am correct. I correct in saying that? Yes, that's correct. This is my main head, and this is like the slave. There's two, there's two cabinets up there. Um, and so this is my main one that's that's pushing EL 34s, right? And this is 6550 just to push the other cabinet, and it sounds just a slight difference. But yeah, there would be. Yeah, it's, yeah, just a that's little a bit, cool mix actually. Yeah, it's really it works for me anyway. And how and how are you slaving by the effects loop or? Uh, yes, all effects loop, and, it, uh, and the send goes into. <laughs> Rigor mortis here. Yeah, rigor mortis yeah, exactly. All, yeah, I mean I'm old school. It's it's a, all rack year. Um, you know, from a long time, there's a lot of old stuff there. Like this is a Steve Vai uh, Eventide harmonizer from, you know, wow. 1942 or whatever. It is. No, from <laughs> I think it was 45. 45, but, okay. Yeah. But I mean, it just works for me, you know, and and it's got a great harmonizer setting there and a PCM uh, PCM 70, which is, right. you know, this is old school, and two SPX 90s, which I l still love to this day. Just the, the sound of it just is in incredible. I'm not sure if this is doing anything for sales for Sweetwater, no, but, but this, this is, is interesting all, to know how you get this. So, yeah. And you're using these, you're running this off a Bradshaw switching system that we're yes, looking at. Yes, it all switches from the, it all, uh, I, I run everything by my feet. It just, mm. basically, no MIDI, it's just on and off. I have it gotcha, kind of set it gotcha, and, gotcha. and forget it. Now, how much... Are you, you're, you're not that effects heavy though, even though you've got a lot of stuff here. No, it's just a reverb and some delays. And I, you know, certain songs I put on a harmonizer or, right. uh, and, and I got one set that the um, 2290 is set for a long delay. You know, if I don't want it really right. long slap delay is on there. And then there's a spatial expander down here, chorus, which is amazing. They don't make it anymore. The TC, right. it just, it's just amazing, smooth chorus. I, I believe you've got a compressor in the drawer. Yeah, and that that's you know quiets it down because there's so right. much rag stuff there. So it definitely quiets it. But even the threshold is like on off, so it just it's in the system, but it's it's not it's really right, not, not really it. you know uh, gotcha. squashing it. I, I don't I want it to be more uh, stay open, you know. Yeah. So this is pretty much time based ambient effects. Then there's no. With the effect, with the exception of maybe the harmonizer, you're not chorusing or flanging anything. No, really. not not really. Unless I, you know, want to put it on. I have some fun up there, and I also, 
Um, you use a wah up front as well, don't you? Yes, the wah is um, on a loop. So I can I kick in the loop and then it all travels up to me and I use the wah wah and then I get, I hit it again and it takes it out. Yeah, gotcha, it takes it out. gotcha. Yeah, it's on a loop basis. And there is a Leslie, um, I don't, I'm not sure if I want to pull that drawer out because it might mess up so things. I think it's up here, but right? But it's right there, yeah. Oh, this, your Leslie um, right here. Hammond yeah. Leslie's are, are just, I think, phenomenal. I think the best Leslie going. And Hammond, I mean, why not? Hammond makes it. Right, you that know? makes sense, yeah. And to me, this is the best Leslie going, um, and there's one in the drawer there. And this is your, obviously, the uh, compressor you're yeah. talking about, right? Well, this is, yeah, first of all, this, you know, that's the, the A-Rig, A-Rig is these two and that that I'm using tonight, the A-Rig. And this is a whole spare rig here from, from this up. So this is all B, this stuff yes, here? correct. So B has, oh, it's all pedals. So you've replaced all of this, <laughs> this which is worth more than my car and probably my house. <laughs> You've replaced it with pedals. With pedals, exactly. Oh, this is cool. I so replaced- you've got the Leslie and the compressor for the, I guess these are just on clean as a rule? Well, I, whatever I, yeah, yes, the clean is, is no, I can use the, the Leslie the dirty both. too. Yeah. Either war, you know. But yes, that, the, the compressor is for clean, for sure. Yeah. But there's there's more. There's oh, a, there's more. There's, so, oh, there's, there's a, a Univibe and a gate. You know, oh, the and, smart gate's great. Yeah, and a brick, you know, whatever, just to, for power. Oh, gotcha. Um, and yeah. below here, mainly, oh. This just, I've Three just, delays yeah, I've just pitch. emulated basically what I have down there. Yeah, all with pedals. That's brilliant. So yeah. you've got your line six unit here. Yeah, that's mostly for chorus. Right. You know, then then pitch shifting with the boss and then re- this is a great reverb, RV3, yes. then DD7. DST2. Yeah, and then a, there's got one of them's a long delay and one of them's, you know, just my regular delay going. It just, I just kind of copied what I had going there. Right. You know, pr- pretty just much. Just in a, in a v- very much more compact. And this and a spare Bradshaw, <laughs> another Bradshaw system up here, gotcha. just in case something happens to the A rig, you know, the B rig is here. And these two heads are here, uh, are, are designed just for that system. Gotcha. So these two heads, for that, that system. system, those two heads for that system. And then so mirroring it, yeah. Yeah. Or as close as you can get. Close and get, and it's, it's pretty close, believe it, with the pedals. This is pretty compact as well. It, it's great. Uh, if we do like a, um, like let's say a baseball stadium, you know, the guys, after a baseball game, they got to get this gear out fast. That's pretty tough to take out there. Right. So he yeah. takes this whole top off. And just throws and, it and out And he gets a couple of Marshall heads that I have in the truck. I have two more heads in the truck. So we take them out of the truck and just put that and throw that at my, at my feet and it works. And, and, you know, as well. Um, talking of T-Bird, this is quite impressive. The, you've got the little marshal here, which he's <laughs> using to, he's using, believe it or not, this little marshal up here, he's using to monitor the wireless to make sure there's not a problem. There's not a crackle in the wireless, right. And this is to, to monitor Monitor effects. me. Yeah. Right, monitor me. Through one of the DIs. Right, the DI comes out of the top head and goes into the, this... Um, marshal valve state, 80, 80. Yeah, Big yeah. Grief. Yeah, I'm pretty old um, school. Oldie, oldie, but Billy Gibbons used these for years. Yes, yes, they he did. They sound great. Yeah, I've got a bunch of them. I started collecting them after I, I heard Billy was, <laughs> of course I did. <laughs> of course I did. And, um, uh, you know, he uses one of them just to power that. And there's, it's stereo, so you can you know, have another cabinet, whatever he wants. But, but that's a 150-watt Sidewinder yep. there, so it, it handles it pretty, pretty loud. And he's so he's got his own. He lives in his own living room here. Yeah, of, I've, of I've, me. Actually, I've actually stood here. It's like a stereo. There's Dave's out there in mono, and it's stereo <laughs> here. Well, he's stereo out there too. It's crazy, yeah. And then everything goes into the Furman. Um, at, it holds it at one ten. Right. Gotcha. Yeah, everything, all this equipment, you know, because I, I when I before I had that, some gigs, you know, you, it, maybe you're in a theater, an old building, and. The power is just not, you know, it's yeah, it just fluctuating yeah. up and down. I'm like, what's Sags going on? Yeah. You know, what's going on my rig? And so we, we bought, we have, I have a few of those. Yeah, it's worth and, getting. Yeah, great. It yeah. holds everything at steady at 110. Every night, the sound is consistent. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, and then it just goes into, um, well, it actually, actually goes here first, you know. It's a wireless rig. And, <laughs> of course, I'm old school with, with Nady wirelesses. I've been with Nady for so long. And these 950s are like tanks. And... Um, also, a good substitute for that because these are, these are getting so old. Is the Line Sixes are really good. These um, yeah, they are uh, G nineties, I think. Uh, um, they, they, anyway, they, they're really a, a good, and I, I use those for spares. But they sound, I think they sound great. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. but I, I'm just so attached to the nadies, <laughs> I just can't get away from them. So, 
anyway, it's a good, it's a good spear. I love this too. The little cone for the strobe. <laughs> it's a, yeah. Never seen that before. It's That's a cup. pretty cool. Yeah, it is a cup. <laughs> it's You're a right. Cup. It's a solo cup. <laughs> My tech is old school too, as well. Yeah, God bless him. I know. Right, uh, let's take a quick look at the cabs and your controller out there. Sure. I think we're good to rock. Thank sure. you, sir. Oh, no problem. Thank you, Nick. So here we are on stage, and behind this little scrim here, we have three 1960B Marshall cabinets, 4x12s, loaded with the 75s? 75s. Yeah, stock, stock. I, I like them. They go good with the heads because I feel like the 2210s are like, they get a lot of distortion, a lot of, you know, right. a lot of, a lot of, not so much gain, but yeah, distortion out of it. A lot of, um, you know, I get good feedback out of it. And the Celestians, just seem to clean it up a little bit. Right. And I just, it's a good match. And that's the way they came. They sold, you guys sold them that right. when you worked in Marshall. Yeah, I, you know, yeah it's a, it's a good Marshall. pairing. It's, it's a, a good, good pairing. pairing. So yeah. I, I just kept it, you know, like like you, you made it, yeah. you know? So it's um, it, it's a good combo and I just kept with it. And the middle one you're not running, that's purely for space. When you slice them together, or you, you know, and I, it's okay too, that'll work too. Sometimes I do that too. But I like the space of it. I don't know, it just gives a little breathing room for yeah. me. And, and it just, it just widens know, it, just, it a bit as yeah, well. Yeah, it just sounds so much better for me anyway. Well, especially as you're, you're going to be right the way out there. So that kind of pushes more air. It's a wider push of I, air if I that's love not it. weird. Yeah, it yeah. just, it's more, it, it creates you know, more space or whatever. Well. You know, I can, I can hear it over there, over there. It's, 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 it's good. It, it just reacts better for me right. than, than two butted up against each other, which, is, which works too. That's fine. I've done that for years too. But I just, it's more luxury. If you can, if you have a big stage and you can put with one a dummy in the middle, even better. And the reason for the dummy is three looks cooler than two. It's, right. There you go again. One more again. <laughs> like the pickups, I got, a, I got a theme going. I never thought, this is like three. therapy. This is like therapy. Yeah. This is sweet water therapy. This is good. <laughs> and last but by no means least, here we are on stage with the control center. This is where Dave runs everything using his custom audio electronics multiple switcher here, and then a wah, and then a univibe controller. Just run us quickly through this, Dave. Yeah, it's um, pretty simple. All, all that rack gear over there, it's just, I, I have a few things on for, you know, like my regular um, rhythms and leads. I, I don't switch that much. There's a, uh, like an SPX90 on, there's a um, PCM70 for a little bit of uh, uh, slap. And, right. um, uh, reverb, of course, reverb's on, and that's the amp switcher right there for the for the Marshall to go, you know, one channel or the other. Right. And then um, and you've this got is, some presets and that. Yeah, uh, not not really much. You know, it's just basically basically uh, like clean, and and I it should be the chorus on there. It's not on there. Um, the the same same type the reverb and a couple of couple of delays just to make it swishy a little, little bit, right. you know, and, and the chorus is really nice, the TC chorus. No, no, nothing fancy, really. I don't, I usually just like to put stuff on, you know, by myself, you know, it's not a lot of, not a lot of presets I use. So you've just, got a clean and a dirty and then you just switch stuff on and off. Exactly. That's and it. That's the, that's the thing. And I have some fun with it, you know, and just, you know, sometimes, sometimes I turn something on and go, Ooh, that's not good. <laughs> Could have shut, shut that up. That didn't work, you know. Just, you know, I have some fun. At least I have some fun, you know. Here yeah. And, so you're in control at the end of the day. That's great. Yeah, so can, yeah. Tony, you know, he he's the mechanic over there, and I have some fun over here. This yeah, is so this you, is my playground. You're you're the race car driver. He's the guy making sure the car is functioning. Exactly. Make sure the tires. Rigo Mortis, yeah, yeah, as exactly. he so rightly calls it. Right. And I I have a, um, a you know a Vox a Vox Wawa. Um, I, I have Dunlops too. Dunlop, I like Dunlops, but right now I just threw a Vox on there. I keep, keep changing for right. have some fun. And and the, the Wawa is in the loop, so and the, the Wawa is on at all times. And if I want to get access it, I have to hit that, and now it's on. Uh, where it says Wawa, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. So, <laughs> right. And uh, and then I that's off right there. So I have to make a little little foot move there. Gotcha. Wawa on, Wawa off. off. Yeah. I don't. Click it on the switch on the wah. Wow. And it says a Amada Rocks. That's from Bob, Bob Bradshaw put that on there. Of course. Bob Bradshaw, is, I think, is a genius. He's my guru. Right. I have five Bradshaw rigs. I think he's he's amazing. And I still use his stuff to this day. And, and it just, it just, it's a tank. Now, it's, is, is, 
is that actually hard written in there so you can't overwrite it? It just always says No, he has to do it. I don't even know how to do it. I'll, I'll mess something up if I try to change it. No, that's Perfect. it. And I think he, I think he put what, Mr. Clean. Oh, there that, you that go. That was a stock Mr. Clean on that one. That's yep. funny. So Mr. Clean or Amato oh, Rocks. Yeah, and then I just switch whatever I want. And that's just the, um, the speed for the uh, Univibe. Gotcha. You know, which is just kind of fun. You cool. turn it on fast or whatever. And then the, the Leslie is on off here, and then there's a speed control there, you know, to, gotcha. to go fast or, or, or and then you hit it and then it goes Slows back to down. the slow. Gotcha. And then out. Gotcha. It goes off. Fast so slow it's, it's pretty, yeah. very simple. Very simple. I just have some fun. I don't use, there's so many presets you can use, but I, I, I just, I don't like to use it that way. I'm just, Looks I'm like you just, just got Amato Rocks and Mr. Clean and then this, switch stuff in and out. Then and I you, throw the stuff in and out for myself, yeah. Right, cool. Yeah. During the, during the show, you know, I usually know what works, but sometimes I get bored and just <laughs> hit something and it usually doesn't work, you know, like, uh-oh, that mm -hmm. doesn't work. And he's always looking at me like, what uh -oh. you do that for? I'm like, oh, I'm having some fun, whatever. <laughs> well, Dave, thank you, my friend. Uh, really appreciate it. Thank you, Nick. This was, this was a ball, man. It Thanks, was. guys. Thanks, guys. Sweetwater. There you go. Three. <laughs>